Hello and welcome to a Notes for God podcast. I'm so glad you're joining again and listening. Thank you so much. This is episode 16. Don't forget to go and follow me on Instagram at a Notes for God. My YouTube channel, a Notes for God. My website, a Notes for God. It's just so easy to remember, right? A Note for God.com. And don't forget to also, when you're on my website, I have a No Forgot Daily Devotional. Perfect way to get into the habit again, to start reading the Bible and really spending that time with God. I know you're not the only one. I as well sometimes go days without reading the Bible. And then I'm like, man, I need to get back to it, right? Because there's so much insight and so much for me relaxation and just realizing there's so much wisdom there, right? We don't have to do life alone. So let's get started on today's episode. It is 1 King 17. And you might have heard the story. And the reason I'm talking about this today is because I, I heard this specific Bible verse at church on Sunday. And it really got me thinking like, wow, how much faith this woman had to have. So let me start. I'm going to read it. So if you're driving, just listen. But if you are at home taking notes, definitely go to 1 King 17 and it's 824. And it's the widow at Zarephath, right? Then the Lord said to Elijah, go and live in the village of Zarephath near the city of Zidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. So he went to Zarephath, and as he arrived at the gate of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks, and he asked her, Would you please bring me a little water in a cup? As she was going to get it, he called to her, Bring me a bite of bread too. But she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. And... I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil at the bottom of a jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal, and then my son and I will die. But Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go ahead and do what you have said, but make a little bread for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your container until the time when the Lord sends rain and crops to grow again. So she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. There was always enough flour and oil left in the containers, just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. Sometime later, the woman's son became sick. He grew worse and worse, and finally he died. Then she said to Elijah, O man of God, what have you done to me? Have you come here to point out my sins and killed my son? But Elijah replied, Give me your son. And he took the child's body from her arms, carrying him up to the stairs to the room where he was staying, and lay the body in his bed. Then Elijah cried out to the Lord, O Lord my God, why have you brought tragedy to this widow who has opened her home to me, causing her son to die? He then stretched himself over the child three times and cried out to the Lord, O Lord, my God, please please let this child's life return to him. The Lord heard Elijah's prayers and the life of a child returned, and he revived. Then Elijah brought him down from the upper room and gave him to his mother. Look, he said, your son is alive. Then the woman told Elijah, now I know for sure that you are the man of God. You are a man of God and that the Lord truly speaks through you. Now, when I heard this Bible verse at church, one of the things that stuck out to me and the pastor was also saying is when she said, I'm basically gathering, and this is verse 10, I'm basically gathering sticks and I'm going to make this meal And then my son and I are going to die. I'm sorry, that's going to be verse 12. I'm just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal. And then my son and I will die. To me, it was like, wow. She knew, like, 
in her mind, she must have known this is this was it. And there's nothing else that can happen. She was prepared because she went to gather those sticks to make that last meal, right? And another thing that stuck to me was that Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes when you're with those, let's equate it to money, let's say. When you have those last dollars or coins or whatever, and then somebody tells you, don't be afraid, you kind of think like, are you crazy? Like, this is all I have left, okay? But even then, he says, go ahead and do just what you have said, but make a little bread for me first. Wait, what? You So you don't want me to worry, right? And you don't want to be, you don't want me to be afraid. Okay. But yet you want me to feed you first and not my son and I. And then he says, then use whatever's left over to feed yourself and your son. Now, let's be honest. How many of us would say, you're crazy. I'm not. This is my last and I'm going to give it to myself and my son or myself and my family, right? Are we like the widow who then decides to follow through? Because if you go on verse 15, it says, so she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. Now, if you even read the beginning of this chapter, which is chapter 17, in the, the couple of the, the first sentences, it says, uh, there was not going to be rain for a few years. Did she know that? I'm not sure, but he did. So here it's like you had to have some kind of faith to be like, wait, okay, so you're telling me not to be afraid. You're telling me to feed you. And then you make a promise. You said, for this is what the Lord the God of Israel says there will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and crops to grow again. Now, if this is all you have left, are you going to believe, for example, that that money in that account is going to grow? Because let's be honest, you know, our our worldly thoughts get to us like, wait, I have like a hundred dollars in my account. Like God, how are you going to grow that to a couple hundred or even a couple thousands of dollars? Like, how is that going to happen? Right? Oftentimes we don't want to give that last part of whether it's the money, the food, like she did, because I don't see in the natural how it can happen. But here he is, God is promising her, There will always be enough flour and olive oil left in that container. Are we quick to give it all to God? Right? I I can attest to many times where I didn't have enough. And I didn't know where it was going to come from because in my natural mind, I was like, well, nobody owes me money. (laughs) So surely I can go ask people for money to put that money in my account. But it's that reassurance saying, God, I trust you, right? I trust you over and over. I cannot see it, but I know you are going to provide for myself and my family, right? So it is a wonderful story literally to read. And what I like about this story is that it doesn't just stop at verse 14. Right? It doesn't just say, don't be afraid, give me your food first, then you feed yourself. And then God is promising that you're always going to have flour, right? It continues to say she did, right? We're not guessing like, well, did the widow get food? Did, um, did he get food? What happened? What I love is it gives you the example So she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. 
we are not left guessing. Can God provide? Will he forget about us? Is he giving us a promise, but then not fulfilling, right? And then sometimes with the Bible, especially with verses, we really have to break it down. Sometimes people think like, oh, these are just old stories or people made up, whatever people want to think, right? But if you're a believer, sometimes you really have to analyze the story, right? If God can do it for this widow, what makes you think he can't do it for you? That is really where we kind of have to push our fleshy thoughts out of the way and say, God is going to do it. God is going to do it for me. If he did it for her, he's going to do it for me, right? If he did it for Sarah, he's going to do it for me, right? And you look at different people in the Bible, right? If he did it for Dan, he's going to do it for me. If he did it for Job, he's going to do it for me. For Joseph, he's going to do it for me, right? And you read these stories of, of people who went through things, trials, right? Um, going to jail, people coming after them. And yet God always had their back, right? God always provided. And here again, we see the story where God provided even when her son passed away. It's not like Elijah said, well, you fed me, you got food. The end. Like he didn't promise to wake up your son. Like he didn't promise to bring your son alive. So this is where it stops, right? Give me your son. And then in verse 21, he says, oh, Lord, my God, please let this child live. Re life return to him. The Lord heard Elijah's prayer and the life of the child returned. And it's like, God is always going to come through and show out, right? I see this a lot too, where it's like, it's, it could only be God, right? This is a season of where it could only be God. I give no man credit for everything that's happened in my life. But what are we in November, <laughs> the last year, right? It's all God. I couldn't do it. I never saw it, but God knew, right? So I definitely want you to go back to read uh, 1 Kings 17 and it's 8 through 24 and really study what is God telling you here, right? Sometimes when it's just that little bit, just that little bit, God is asking us, hey, just give it to God, right? Give it to God and then see how much more he's going to provide. It reminds me of this image. I'm sure you've seen it on social media where God um, is asking this little girl for her little teddy bear, right? And in the back, he's holding a bigger teddy bear. And it's like, I'm asking you for this little because I'm going to give you so much, something so much bigger and more wonderful. Are we willing to let that little go because we're so comfortable with that little or we don't want to let it go because we don't trust God? Yeah, I, I see what you did for these people in the Bible, God, but it's just me. I don't trust you. Um, I have issues. Why would you provide for provide me with X, Y, and Z when I'm not a good Christian or I do whatever thing, right? It's, we have to realize how good God is and we are children of God, right? We are the children, we are his children. He's always going to provide, right? If you're a mother, because you know I'm a mother of two young kids, we are always going to provide for our children no matter what, right? We're not going to be like, well... I don't know who's going to get this stuff for you, but <laughs> good luck, right? God is always going to provide for his children, right? And it's going back to the story. I just need that little bit. Just need that little bit to know that you know I'm going to provide for you. I hope you love this verse and I really hope that you go back and reread it. And that's one of the things I encourage you, especially in this podcast, is to, when you read a verse, really break down things. Don't rush reading it like, oh, I'm done in two seconds, the end. Because then you're really not reading it. Like what? It, and then if I ask you, like, what did you read? You're going to be like, uh, I'm not sure. Because that's what my students used to do, <laughs> right? So definitely breaking each word 
And if you don't know a word, look it up. And if there's a color or number, look it up. Because if things are written there by God for a reason, right? So definitely look it up and you're like, wow. Like before reading the Bible, and I'm going to be honest, you might be like, I already knew that girl. I did not know that purple really was a color for royalty. So when you read certain things, you're like, ah, he's royalty, right? Who, who whatever, whoever, whatever person is wearing purple, right? So definitely breaking words down and studying certain things, even studying the culture of why people did what they did, answer how they answered or acted, right? Because it was culture back then. So then you're able to understand certain things. So definitely take, take some time to study your Bible, um, analyze every word, right? Especially, especially if it's a word you do not know, right? Because that one word might tell you the whole message of that paragraph or that verse. But if you're not looking it up, you're like, oh, I have no idea, right? So definitely take some time and break it up and look up the words, right? What I do is I have this um, journal and as I'm reading something and if I'm not really sure, I'll look it up. You know, write the, I'll write the word in my journal, look it up on Google, you know, do different um, definitions or, or articles or whatever. And then I write it down in my own words like, oh, okay, now I know. When I was reading, what was I reading? I'm going to look through my notes right now. Was it Exodus? I think when I was reading Exodus, um, what were we? What was I reading? I was reading something with the different people there. I just wrote all the people down, right? The plagues. I just wrote them down because sometimes when you write things down, not sometimes, you tend to remember them more. People, I remember, okay, here we go. Genesis 33, if you haven't read it, it's about Jacob and Esau. So I had to write, like, this is the daughter of Jacob. The These are the slaughtered every male, like Simon and really breaking it down, right? El Shaddai, God Almighty. And then I write, Rachel dies and gives, ben, um, gives birth to Benjamin. So really breaking the 12 tribes of Israel, breaking that down, right? Just like you take notes, well, you if you went to college or even high school, you, you're taking notes, right? I really had to break this down with Abraham, Isaac, and Ishmael and all that stuff. So <laughs> all I'm saying to you is definitely break it down so you learn and you understand, right? Oftentimes people uh, spend too much time studying other things that don't pertain to the Bible and you become more of an expert in that, but you forget to read and become the expert or really study the Bible, right? So definitely take some time this week. I know it's Thanksgiving. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving week. Just take some time and get a verse, maybe a verse that you really like, but you really haven't studied. So I'll leave you with that. Hopefully you do study First King uh, 17 and the breakdown of it. God is asking you for that, that thing, that small thing to give. Because he's always going to give you back in return. He's always going to provide and take care of you. All right. I'm ending with the episode with Matthew 25, 23. Because when I close my eyes in this world and open up my eyes to see God, my father, I want him to reach his hand out to me and say, well done, good and faithful servant.